Hello you lovely lot, how you did Lim? Welcome to my team talk. Uh, so, I didn't post last week, uh, I've been a little bit wonky. Um, <laughs> I'm a perimenopausal woman with issues. <laughs> um, it, it's not that bad at all, um, just there's certain areas in my life that I just can't get consistency and no matter how much I try and in my life I've kind of always I'll focus on one area and grasp it but then everything else kind of falls by the wayside um it's very difficult for me to get balance and over the years I've got much better at it but there's certain times when I just can't grasp certain things but that's okay um I'm doing my best you know, and I kind of remind myself about having some gratitude, you know, where I'm at and I'm sober, I'm winning, you know, it's all good, it's all good. Anyway, enough about me, let's talk about um, uh, mental health, What well, the tips on mental health, what, so what are they listed as? Mental health tips, daily habits to improve your well-being or tips for improving your mental health or whatever they may be. Now, look, they've got value, huge value. You know, in my life, in my recovery, I kind of learned that um, I have to have um, good stuff in my life, like good habits and daily practices. Um, in, in in one part of a recovery of mine, they were called top-line behaviours, and they were um, habits or actions that I'd take that would make me feel good, that would nurture me in times of struggle. Because sometimes when you... Um, doing a recovery program it's very intense and so I would list those things that made me feel good and they were just simple things like um hot bath or reading a nice book or eating some really nutritious food um drinking water more because I, I struggle with drinking water um having a coffee with friends or having a really nice long phone call I mean I'm not a phone call person but when I do it can be quite nourishing for me um you know, all those things. Um, and, you know, when we talk about um, mental health tips, it's so many different things. Start listening, you know, walk in the park, you know, in green places, green spaces, um, call with a friend, laughing, um, yoga, meditation, uh, take your dog for a walk, um, meeting up with family and friends. You know, the list goes on. And they have significant value so i'm not i'm demining them but what i'm trying to say is that if people think that that's enough to um sustain them when life can hit you because life you know we do have times in our life when heart life can hit hard and that's loss right and it can be loss of a loved one it can be loss of a job it can be divorce it can be um illness you know um serious illness and and at these times you know those things might keep the stress level down and on a surface level they can be helpful but you know at the core we need more right um i i learned a lot in my um as in my mental health struggles and but also in my um, professional career in mental health about hope and how powerful that is um and about taking responsibility for my mental health um but when it comes to finding something more that will sustain me through i learned a lot um and when i do learn i like to learn from people if i if i'm going to read a book or a philosopher's book or or um or watch a film or something when that message i want that message to come from someone who's experienced suffering if they're going to talk about how we um, deal with suffering I want that person to have experienced that you know I want to know their backstory uh, and the most important kind of in influence in this area for me and inspiration was Viktor Frankl um, some of you may have heard of him um, and he certainly did fucking suffer he was um, a professor in neurology and psychiatry I believe uh, in Vienna um, but he wrote a book um, about the man's search for meaning 
um, and basically the 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 idea of it and the the theory behind it is that when we find purpose or meaning in our life, we can survive anything. And he certainly can talk. He's certainly an authority of that because he's survived concentration camps, plural, and one of them was Auschwitz. And he, and in that, and and can't even imagine what that's like. You know, the fear, the depravity, the anger, the abuse, the humiliation that that you must endure in in you know in a concentration camp um and he lost also lost his family his mother and father and brother i think i think it was only his sister that was that was left and they died in these concentration camps and someone led to the gas chamber now if someone can talk about suffering that's that person right and from that he founded logotherapy which is a, a sort of a branch of existential therapy what we know today um and he talks about that you know how he survived and why he survived is because he found meaning in a place like that and if he can find purpose and meaning in a place like that then we can find it right um and it was to teach he had to do it secretly of course um he couldn't do that openly but that's what helped him get through and um it's like, you know, it, it's the suffering. If we can find meaning, and, and what is meaning, you know, and purpose in life? What is that? Well, how I understand it is that if we can give meaning to our life that goes beyond our life, like when our life ends, it continues. So we leave a legacy, right? We, we've made an impact on life, however small that is. And when I talk about impact, I don't mean we have to be some great leader, or some famous influencer or innovator or whatever. Um, it just means that we've kind of left a mark and an influence, maybe with our family, with our friends. Um, you know, our values, where they talk about us, like they might go, oh, he was a great man, you know, he was a great friend and you could rely on him. He had great integrity. That sort of thing that we leave an impact because then it means that our life and when we die, you know, it's not, finite it means that it continues in our subconscious if we know that we've left something a legacy um then that's already given us meaning and that we can survive anything um it was nietzsche is it how do you pronounce it nietzsche 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 so he's, he's the german philosopher jordan peterson talks about him a lot if you've heard of jordan peterson fantastic guy uh he talks about him a lot um he said to light to live is to suffer and basically, so not verbatim, but um, if we find meaning in suffering, then we'll survive anything, basically. Um, and so, yeah, it's about kind of, um, and, and for me, how I understand that with me and how I'm kind of um, managing to um, more than survive, you know, kind of starting to thrive now, you know, because I have that legacy that I feel even if my genes pass on, you know, alcoholism or, or addiction or whatever, that I've left, um, I, I've stopped that pattern and that I've I've found sobriety. And so, you know, my grandchildren or great-grandchildren might look back and say, well, my grandmother got sobriety, you know, it's possible. So I've, I've left, I've made a difference, all right, already. Um, and I like to think as well that I want, you know, that I can share some value and, and that's important to me. Um, and so it means that times when life hits me and knocks me, that I've got a purpose for living. Um, and and uh, Victor Frankl also says about, you know, in, in death we can find meaning, you know, the kind of dignity in death. Um, I think it's, for me, it's about, you know, being, knowing who we are first off, you know, finding out who we are, taking that time, asking those important questions and then, and, and making a difference, and, and making a difference in life, like I say, doesn't have to be some grand gestures. Um, it can just be leaving an impact from our family and friends, and can be through art, through music, through just our values, like honouring our values and having integrity, um, building a business. It might be in 
traveling the world and visiting some amazing places and and then coming back and sharing those experiences there's so many ways you know you know helping with social causes you know getting involved with them or donating to charities however little that may be you know uh, animal charities or children's charities but just kind of making a stamp making a mark about who we are and being proud of that right um and that gives us meaning but also that we know that we're impacting the people that matter to us and again you know i say that because we leave this life we don't leave it with all the material things that we enjoy you know there's nothing wrong with having those things but to understand and get a perspective on that that that's not really the important stuff the important stuff is who we are uh, and the impact we're making um I'll, I'll go on to do some videos on how to find our purpose i mean if, if you're a bit lost i know that i was for many years it, it wasn't till later in life that obviously i got sobriety and that's what really gave it meaning before that i i was very lost i mean yes I got into teaching in my early 20s, well, mid-20s, but I was teaching beauty therapy and hairdressing at that time. That's my early 20s. But teaching was my thing, and that's when I went on to get sobriety, well, midway, and then I did my psych psychology degree while I was still drinking. <laughs> and then um, and then went on to train as a therapist, whatever. But, you know, it's that's where my part that's when the strength when i gathered um um when i gathered pace right and i started to get excited about life and started to um really feel that i was gonna make something of my life and and that was exciting now i got lost along the way again but not to that depth um and i talk about that you know there's there's a difference that when I got, because I still had my mental health issues, right, but getting sober gave me so much that it never took me quite to that place again that I was before because I had that that meaning and that, um, that purpose. Uh, and that's what it talks about. And that's why I love this stuff where you kind of, um, you learn, you know, you learn about yourself and you kind of just want to do better. Um, so those things, those mental health tips, which are great. And so on top of that, if you've got your purpose and meaning, right, or and you understand that, you understand yourself and you know what makes you tick and what turns you on and what gets you up in the morning, then it's kind of those stuff on top, just the cherry on top, right? That's the kind of sprinkling the stardust on top. Uh, and then you can really accelerate. And, and that's kind of where I'm at, trying to get that sort of that good stuff on top and getting consistency with it because that's where I struggle um but it's exciting to kind of put those things into place and go right okay let's what's the next thing so I think it's important to acknowledge that all those well-being tips mental health uh, daily habits etc do have enormous value um they're certainly important in my life um but if you really want to kind of gain some traction in your life and you really want to turn it around and you want to build your character right build that strength and so that you can leave that legacy whether that be for your family and friends or whatever but and that your kids see that right so you're a great role model that you know there is something of you that you can be proud of and um to leave behind um then it's about having a bit of a deeper look and um investigating and sometimes it can come out of tragedy. How many times do we see um, in the media, say, when tragedies happened, but um, the people around that are left kind of find purpose and uh, in making a difference so that that doesn't happen, happen to other people, whether it's changing the law or, you know, fighting for justice. And that gives them a sense of purpose in... in hellish tragedy that people go through um and i think it just proves the point that you know we can get through anything um if we've got a sense of purpose and know that we're we're making an impact on the world however small that may be so at some point i'll do some videos on finding your purpose you know your why um and because i've i've delivered some self development programs around that stuff and how you can find your purpose 
um, Jack Canfield does a lot of it so in my program with Jack Canfield um, I can share some of that with you if there's a demand for it so let me know um, in the comments if you're interested but otherwise thanks for watching guys um, subscribe it's free why not and I hope to see you in my next video you take care speak soon